what is it about this wish to convey a language which is seen? Perhaps language has always been a gift from the other. It's a little hard to picture how the kind of language I'm using right now ever got started. I mean, notice that language is a behavior. It's a behavior. That's, that's all it is. It's a complex activity having to do with small mouth noises and the neurological processing of same. We must have been essentially as we are before language. It's like breakdance or something like that. You're fully set up to do it. And people have been for millennia. But until somebody actually does it, it only exists as a formal possibility in the organism. And I wonder how many of these things there are. I mean, Breakdance is an interesting example, albeit somewhat trivial. But it shows that after five, six, seven thousand years of civilization, you can still come up with a behavior that nobody has ever seen before. I've spent a lot of time thinking about language and how what a limited tool it is. And yet our whole world is held together by nothing more than small mouth noises. And it's incredible. A notion of self and world of self and species all rest on the carrying capacity of small mouth noises. One of the things which interests me, and some of you have heard me talk about this before, Good psychedelic trips inspire a lot of homework, which usually means reading in curious areas. And I discovered that octopi cephalopods, which in case you're not up on your evolutionary biology, these are mollusca. They're not even vertebrates. They're related to escargot and banana slugs. I mean, you can hardly imagine a form of life more alien to ourselves. I mean, we broke off from the other primates about three million years ago. But the invertebrates and the vertebrates separated from each other about 700 million years ago. Well, 
an interesting thing going on with octopi. Most people have heard that they can change color. And I think that most people probably assume that this means that like certain lizards and certain butterflies, they camouflage themselves against their background. That's not what's going on. Color and texture for octopi are the medium of language. You could almost say that an octopus is a naked mind. Because as the octopus goes through certain internal changes, hunger, sexual need, whatever, color changes accompany these shifts in internal state and appear on the surface of the octopus. You could almost say it wears its language like an overcoat. It's clothed in its own meaning. So, somehow these creatures are elves of language, catalysts for the concrescence of cognition. <laughs>